This phenomenon of abrupt transition, where everything changes suddenly, can be observed in other fields of chemistry and physics. A few examples. A plate onto which sand has been poured is vibrated by a loudspeaker. In the middle of the disorder provoked by the vibration of the plate and the sand which is ejected, order and organization suddenly appear, but only at a certain frequency. Ice, water, vapor transformation according to temperature. Different states at different temperatures. Observed through a microscope, these organic crystals grow in a crystalline form from the liquid state when the temperature drops to a level close to zero degrees Celsius. This magnet, which is holding a metal plate, will lose its magnetic properties as it heats up. Finally, this tablet made of superconducting material on which a small magnet has been placed will provoke a spectacular phenomenon. First, at normal temperature, nothing. Cooled down with liquid nitrogen, it will cause the magnet to levitate. In reality, the magnet's magnetic field creates an electric current inside the superconducting material which generates on its surface another magnetic field, exactly opposite to that applied by the magnet. In this material, the absence of the Joule effect and the expulsion of the magnetic field caused by the magnet show that the material has a resistance equal to zero. Building magnets in superconducting materials is the solution adopted for the LHC in order to render the project practicable from both a technical and economic point of view. However, first a superconducting material must be chosen which is capable of resisting the various mechanical constraints of the system. Moreover, it must possess characteristics whose cryogenics can be mustered so that it can be maintained at the right temperature. In fact, there are a great many superconducting materials but their characteristics are linked to various parameters. In this first two-dimensional diagram, the temperature T and magnetic field B are two phases which can appear inside the material, a normal phase and a superconducting phase. The curve represents the frontier between the two possible phases. We can clearly see that as the temperature falls, an increasingly stronger magnetic field can be applied while the material still remains superconducting. Beyond this critical temperature, or the value of the magnetic field applied to the material, it becomes normal again. That's to say, it loses its zero resistance characteristics. A second diagram derived from the first engenders a third parameter which must be taken into account. I, the strength of the current which needs to be passed through the cable. We can see that beyond a certain limit, the material reverts to its normal state and the cable, which is no longer superconducting, will start to heat up. For example, YBACUO, which is a ceramic composite, already becomes superconducting at minus 173 degrees Celsius, but is not suitable for the LHC application because it breaks and can't be used to construct a magnet. It's the material which was used in our levitation experiment. The material chosen for the LHC is niobium-titanium, which is superconducting at the temperature of liquid helium. It has the indispensable mechanical resistance qualities required to resist the configurations designed by the LHC engineers. Moreover, to improve the performance of the magnet, it's been decided to use helium at minus 271 degrees Celsius, that is to say, very close to absolute zero. At this temperature, helium becomes superfluid and conducts heat perfectly. It no longer seems to be subject to the phenomenon of gravity. Infiltrates everywhere and can therefore completely immerse the superconducting cables and thus evacuate the heat perfectly. But how have these superconducting cables been assembled to form the LHC magnet? The genesis of an invention. 
In order to accelerate two waves of protons circulating in opposite directions in a machine which is both compact and necessitates a minimum electric power, the engineers have succeeded in designing a magnet capable of ensuring the simultaneous guidance of two bundles of protons moving in opposite directions. An explanation of the principle. Iron filings are deposited on a plate crossed by copper wire. The principle is well known. If an electric current passes through the conductor, it causes a uniform magnetic field in a perpendicular plane. Field B perpendicular to the current I. With two opposing currents, you obtain a stronger field, which is better oriented in the useful zone between them. By increasing minus I and plus I, you increase the force in field B. We can observe that the lines of the field are closer together. In correctly choosing the geometry of the conductors carrying the currents, minus I and plus I are able to create a uniform magnetic field in the useful zone. Nevertheless, the lines of the field close again, far from the useful zone. Thus, a parasitic field has been created outside the useful zone. The action of the magnetic field on currents minus I and plus I translates into electromagnetic forces minus F and plus F, which tend to open the magnet. 400 tons per meter. To contain the action of these forces, the conductors which carry the currents are fastened in collars made of non-magnetic material. By surrounding all the conducting collars in a yoke made from a magnetic material, iron for example, the lines of the field are confined and thus parasitic magnetic fields are avoided without affecting the field in the useful zone inside the tube, shown in white, in which there's a perfect vacuum. To bend the two bundles of protons circulating in opposite directions, we need two equal and opposite magnetic fields in the two neighboring useful zones. We therefore combine two sets of conductors in tightening collars and a common yoke. Thus combined, the system can function. Finally, the assembly composed of conductors, collars and yokes is inserted into the cylinder, which ensures the mechanical rigidity of the system and plays the role of a tight container for the liquid helium in which the entire structure is immersed. This original idea of using a single magnet for two separate waves of protons has led to the compact size of the machine and greater facilities for the circulation of the helium and therefore for the cooling of the superconducting cables.